everyone, welcome back to Vedic Life Coaching. Thank you so much for joining me and welcome to the September Outlook. Before I dive into the astrology for this month, and that is the sidereal Vedic astrology for the month of September, I just wanted to welcome all the new subscribers. Thank you so much for joining. I also want to thank all of my existing subscribers, people who have watched and commented, who've hit the like button, anyone who's ever booked me for a reading, anyone who supports me in this work. I want to thank you with all my heart. Your support has meant the world to me and it really keeps me going. So thank you so much to everyone who's been so supportive and encouraging. Okay, now before I get into the astrology as well, I also wanted to say please sign up for the newsletter. I've got a newsletter on my new website. Uh, what you can do is you can scroll to the bottom of the home page and all you have to do is enter your email address. You don't need to put your first name or your surname or any of that, just your email address and you'll be able to get my free quarterly newsletter. And I'm going to be launching the first one at the end of this month. Uh, so that will come out for the months of October, November, December. So those three months in that email for each sign, I'm going to write a little preview as to what you can expect for the quarter ahead. So please do sign up for that and it will only be four emails per year. I don't have time to be creating too many emails anyway, but you definitely don't have to worry. It's not going to be spam or anything like that and you will be able to look up your sign and you'll be able to get a prediction, a, a brief prediction for the quarter ahead, but I think that should be quite useful. So please do sign up for that if you would like to receive that. All right, let's get into this month. So this month I want to cover a few things. I want okay, the next part I want to cover is Neptune. Do we have a little bit of good news here with Neptune? Do you know what? I believe we do. I, I, I think there's some relief coming our way. So that could be happening as soon as 18 April 2022. Neptune will go into Pisces. So that's going to be quite interesting. We've got some interesting dates here because on 18 April 2022, Neptune goes into Pisces. So we get a touch of that. But then from 12 September 2022 to 20 Feb 2023, Neptune's going to be back in Aquarius. From 20 Feb 2023 until 27 June 2035, that's long, Neptune will be in Pisces. Now I believe this will be much much better. So Neptune in Aquarius, what has that been like? And I'm thinking of one of you in the comments who you've always for many months been writing beautifully about Neptune uh, in Aquarius and how important that is. You're absolutely right. So thank you so much to that lovely viewer who's always um, written about Neptune. And I'm finally onto it now. Look at me. I've taken a while, haven't I? But um, Neptune in Aquarius, what what has this been doing to us? One of the things I think is that it has atomized humanity. It's separated us all. Okay. So why do I say this? Because we have Aquarius, which is fixed air, and we have Neptune, which is water. Okay, so we've got this fixed air, and then we've got Neptune, which is water. And what I see is like a perfume bottle that's kind of gone, Ch and like we've all just, you know, we're all these little droplets suspended kind of thing. Uh, and it's actually been like that since 2009. Since Neptune moved into Aquarius, that effect would have kind of taken place and, and we've just been atomized ever since. We're, we're kind of becoming all distant. I think what's going to happen is that when Neptune goes into Pisces, because that's Neptune, which is water, and, and into Pisces, which is water, we're going to see everybody come together. We're all going to unite. We're going to be one beautiful body of water again. And you know, I think it's going to be incredible and we have signs of that happening at the moment and I'll see if I, how I go with the editing of this. If I feel like I can, I will insert some uh, footage, if I can, of protesters in Hong Kong who their motto is, we will be like water 
And I don't know if they've been inspired by Bruce Lee on that one because he talks about, you know, when you're in a fight, be like water. He's got that philosophy going on. So uh, I definitely think that humanity is massively going to unite. And the f that's starting to happen now too. Okay, that is really happening at the moment, which is really, really good. All right, so I want to take a look at the astrology for this month. What do we have going on? So, 7th March, no, not 7th March, 7th September, I'm sorry, <laughs> I read the word Mars and I thought March, no, we're in September, I think my head might be in March, that might be what's going on, 7th September, we have Mars move into Virgo, okay, so what's this going to be like? I will be covering that in your mini readings in quite a bit of depth, so don't worry, I'm going to get into that. Uh, we've got the Sun entering Virgo 18 September so both will be there until mid-October so this is quite important we're going to have a lot of Virgo energy happening uh, at this time 7 September onwards we'll start to feel the Virgo energy really start to kick in we've got Mercury in Virgo as well Venus has moved on to be in Libra Jupiter goes back into Capricorn. So back on the Mercury thing, I mean, basically with the mini reports, I'm going to really be taking a look in depth at Mars, Sun and Mercury in Virgo for each of you. So I'm going to be covering that because that's the new news. Okay. Um, Venus is not so exciting. I mean, she's in Libra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jupiter goes back into Capricorn 15 September and he'll be there until 21 November. This is not good. I'm, I'm not looking forward to this at all. And one thing I would say is that, yeah, the astrology from 15 September to 21 November could be uh, very problematic, difficult, little access to courts, wisdom, justice, little ability to right wrongs. This could be a tough time, 15 September to 21 November. Rahu in Taurus, so we're going to have more of a continuation of that. I've spoken about that in the Astro Chat episodes. So it's, it's really quite interesting. This month we've got a lot of Earth energy. There's quite an Earth trine here. We've got Rahu in Taurus, we've got Virgo all lit up, we've got Capricorn all lit up, Jupiter's going back in there. It's a huge amount of Earth energy right now. It's, it's a very Earthy time. Yeah, I've got the note here, almost all planets are in Earth. So, yeah, so this is quite interesting. It's going to be a very earthy time. I also have the note that, yes, there will be Raj Yogas forming in our sky, but not for everyone uh, because Jupiter is joining Saturn in his own sign. But one of you one time in the comments below, you would mentioned this thing about, oh, there's this Raj Yoga forming, that Raj Yoga forming. And do you read that per sign? No, I don't. I don't do that. In the mini reports, I just purely read the movement of that planet through the house and how well placed or how happy is that planet to be transiting through that area. I don't go into Raj Yogas for a mini report. It's too difficult because there are far too many people. But this would be something I would look at if you were consulting me individually. I would be checking that out. I've got the note here, this will be a great month to get practical, to get things done, to achieve, to materialize, to manifest, to do what you can, you know, and that, that's just looking at your individual life there. I, I'm not looking at the collective so much. Uh, it, it's difficult to predict for the whole collective, but what I do know and I do sense is that these next few months are going to be quite difficult especially October, uh, but I'll talk about October when we get there. But overall, it's, it's an earthy month. Now we're just about to go into the mini readings. The mini readings this time, I'm going to be focusing on Virgo and where that is depending on your rising, your moon, or your sun. I know I've complicated everything by including the sun, but sun is useful to look at and some of you have pointed out that you are checking from the sun as well and you found that to be 
beneficial, but definitely the Ascendant and the Moon, you can stick to those two. So I'm going to be looking at Virgo, where that falls for you in your, according to your sign. And we're going to have a look at the new moon and the full moon dates. So are you ready? Let's get stuck in. Aries. Aries, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we've got Mars moving into Virgo this month. So that is happening for you in your sixth house and the sun and Mercury will also be there. The sun's going to follow a little bit later. Mercury's there. So this is a powerhouse month for your career. This is very good for you. Great for career, great for legal issues. If you've got some kind of legal issue or you're competing, some kind of competition that you're in that you want to win. You've got a winning planetary energy that's working for you this month. I also have the note you might be able to pay off some debt this month. You might be able to get ahead on your finances in some way. This month is about shining and winning and yeah that's especially due to Mars and the Sun. So I'm really excited for you there. On the 7th of September we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. How nice. It's happening in your fifth house. <coughs> so this is a great time to launch a new creative project if you can, if you have to launch a social channel or maybe there's, there's some new thing that you want to start that requires your creative touch. Okay, This is a great time to do that on the 7th of September. That's coming up. So if you can, uh, do launch something new at that time. Now on the 21st of September we have a full moon in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada, 12th house. So what I'm saying for all signs is that we've got the ability to experience a deep detachment during this full moon. So one of the things that you can do now for you this is happening in your the area of your spirituality, your spiritual self. So what I'm saying there is can you feel still and no desires and no attachment to anything? So what's an example of no desires and no attachment? Maybe, okay, an example of desire is your spirituality. You want to become more spiritual. You want to become a more spiritual being. Maybe you've been meditating a lot or you've been working hard in one direction and, and you desire progress. So the idea is on the 21st of September, this full moon, just let that desire go and, and be happy with where you are. And an example of no attachment or no aversion, uh, aversion. So maybe let's take a think about this aversion energy here. In terms of your spirituality, you might be concerned about people around you influencing you in a negative way or impacting you. So instead of wanting to run away from other people, uh, just see if you can just be, just, just absolutely be where you are. Not wanting to go somewhere, not wanting to run away from something, none of that, just being. And that's on the 21st of September. But Aries, it is, uh, this is a great month for you. This really is. The, you've got beautiful energy there in the sixth house. So I'm wishing you well this month. And we are now going to welcome Taurus. Taurus, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now we're going to take a look at the movement of Mars into Virgo. The sun will follow after a little while. Mercury is there. So this for you is all happening in your fifth house. Be careful of how you speak with superiors at work. That's one little bit of guidance with these planets here. You might be feeling quite ambitious that you really want to go for it if, if you are feeling that, uh, but don't push it this month. Okay, so these planets might be in that area kind of energizing you, perhaps giving you creative ideas, but don't push it. Right, just uh, see how see how you go. This is not this is not a month to 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 push things. 
I have the note, it's a better month for cultivating your inner authority. And I'm talking about Saturn in the ninth. Jupiter joins Saturn. And this could be a time, this is a better time for you to look at where is my power invested in the world? Can I bring back my power? And can I take more charge of my own life? On my own, not, not needing anyone else kind of thing. On the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. So for you, this is happening in your fourth house. So in terms of planting a seed or a wish or something you would love to achieve, I've got the idea here, visualize adjustments you may want to make to your home. Are you visualizing some changes that you could make to your home? I, I had one just today. I had this thought that, gosh, it'd be great to transform this room into it's got too much stuff get rid of it, a couple of nice sofas and create more space you know I was thinking about creating more space in the home 21st of September we have a full moon in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada 11th house for you so for all signs I'm talking about the great possibility of this Pisces this beautiful Pisces full moon is that we can experience an incredible detachment a detachment where we are just these suspended beings just happy to be you know and I've got the note here feel total stillness no desire no aversions in the area of gains are you able to just be to appreciate all that you have gained so far in life what's an example of this so no desire for gains well that's pretty easy because most of us have got some desire to to gain you know we would love to gain more money we'd love to gain more friends or you know and we go after these things we have this energy of going after and and chasing and creating and but see if you can just just be just not need to chase after anything because sometimes we get a source of enjoyment or pleasure from things on the horizon apologies Taurus moon I think I was saying Sometimes we get a sense of enjoyment or pleasure from <coughs> our dreams and our goals and our things that we're going after, you know. But see if you can just suspend all of that during this full moon on the 21st of September. Uh, and the other thing I mentioned was so no desire, no aversions. And this one's an interesting one. What aversion would you have to gains? But this is an interesting one, actually, because say, for example, I, went, I, I was working uh, through this with a client because she mentioned in the area of fame, she was saying, oh, I wouldn't want to have too much fame come too quickly, you know, and, and we're, we would be averse to that. We're like, oh, no, 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 I don't want that. So there are gains, believe it or not, that you wouldn't want to have happen because it would be too much responsibility or it would be too difficult to do or to handle or to look after. So are you able to detach from desires and aversions in the area of gains? It's a really interesting piece of homework there, Taurus. So thank you so much for tuning in and we are now gonna welcome Gemini. Gemini, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So Mars is moving into Virgo. That's the big news this month. Now the sun will follow a little bit afterwards. We've got Mercury there. Now this is all happening for you in your fourth house. So this is actually not great energy for property matters. Okay, so if you were thinking, I really need to move this month. May, look, maybe you have to move and you will be able to, okay? But just recognize and realize that this is not the best energy for that. This is the kind of thing where if you can put it off for a few weeks, put it off, okay? That, it's that kind of thing. So if you have to do so, but, uh, you know, it would be better to move uh, a bit later. From Mercury's point of view, this is actually really good for you though. You will be able to excel at work because of Mercury. So it's really Sun and Mars. Sun and Mars energy are not ideal uh, in this area, but Mercury is great. So I have the note here, use your logic, not your emotions at work this month. 
and avoid arguments this month. Definitely avoid arguments with mum if you can, um, you know, or and be careful of her health and all that kind of thing as well. And be careful of your health. If you're tired, take it easy. Now on the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. So this is happening in your third house. So in terms of wish fulfillment, a seed that you might want to plant, I have a contemplation question for you. And that is if you were totally courageous, if you were totally without fear, what would you do? Okay, and that's a fun thing to think about on the 7th of September. And that journey that you go on contemplating that will help bring some, some seeds that you want to plant. You'll get ideas for what it is that you would love to do uh, going forward. Now, on the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada, 10th house for you. So for all signs, I'm saying that you have the ability to experience a really profound sense of detachment. So you'll be able to feel total stillness. So no desire and no aversion energy. And for you, that's going to be happening in the area of your career. So this is really interesting because you've got the potential to see if you can love the job that you have. Okay, so this is an energy that where, you know, no desire, no aversion. So on the 21st of September, this full moon, you're looking at the culmination of your career and, and how things have gone to date. And are you able to love the career you have, love parts of it, appreciate your career and what it has given you, <clears throat> might have given you challenges might have given some difficulties, but you would have grown as a result of those things. So are you able to, to kind of, yeah, feel totally still regarding your career? So we're not dreaming up the new career or the next move. So no desire energy and no aversions, you know, um, and that can actually be really, this can be a really good activity for you because when you embrace the current step that you're on fully, then the next step automatically appears. It'll just, it'll just come. And that's what you've got the potential for on the 21st of September. This is really exciting, Gemini. So this is really about embracing where you are, that you don't want to change it, that I'm happy. I am totally happy here. And I'm happy with the mean boss and this and that and the people and whatever it is. You just, you, I'm happy as it is. And sometimes that next step can just magically open up. So I'm wishing you well, Gemini. And we are now going to welcome Cancer. Cancer, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So Mars is moving into Virgo. And this is going to happen, I believe, on the 7th of September. We'll have the Sun following shortly afterwards. Mercury uh, is there as well. So it's quite a full house. And this is the one I want to focus on. Now for you, all of this activity is happening in your third house. This is stunning. Okay, this is so good that I'm super excited for you. So this is a brilliant time for Mars and your sun. So your soul should feel engaged uh, and more able to shine. Your masculine powers of doing will be fully lit and energized. So this is great for money. This is great for promotions. This is great for opportunities. So this is your time to shine. Okay, now on the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni, and this is happening for you in your second house. Okay, so I've got the note here. Enjoy time with your family. Uh, this is a good family time. And this is something really trivial and really practical, but I'm going to say it. Is there a new dish that you would like to make, like food-wise? Is there something that you've been... I have this little recipes folder my uh, my web browser and every now and then I find a new recipe and you know I mean is it something new that you'd like to make and I know that's a really tiny and trivial thing but this would be a good time on the 7th of September to try something very new and in terms of planting a seed in terms of what do you wish for 
What would you wish to set into motion? The, the, grand, the next grand cycle that you would like to set into motion in this new moon. You've got the potential to have some new dreams with your family. What would you like to do with your family? Are there trips that you want to go on in the future or um, is there a project you want to do together or something you want to build or, you know, what would you love to do with your family that's totally new, that's some new cycle that you want to set into motion? So 7th of September is a good time to plant seeds for that kind of thing. Now on the 21st of September, we've got a full moon in Pisces, Purva Bhadrapada. That's happening in your ninth house. So for all signs, I'm talking about this concept of feeling totally detached on this full moon. You have the ability to feel total stillness. So we're talking no de desire energy and no aversions. And that's happening for you in the area of authority. This is fascinating. And I mean, this is, I think all signs are going to be feeling this, but Cancer, you in particular, are going to be looking at authority. And I've got the note here, see if you can love being in the here and now. And I've got in brackets, no rebel energy for now. Okay, so, and that's just for this full moon. Okay, this is just for this full moon. So if, you know, you have a protest the day after, go and do your thing, obviously. But, um, just around this time, if you can make time for feeling totally at peace and not desiring that you need more, say for example, control over your own life. Um, so this is no desire, no aversions. So desire when it comes to authority, yeah, control over your own life. You want more power, you want, you know, um, those kind of things. Just try to just experience the stillness and no aversions. So no aversions to all the authority and, and power that's kind of in everyone's faces at the moment. So yeah, this, this is, um, you might be feeling, feeling the outside world quite a bit, Cancer, and see if you can just be with it. So without desiring it, without resisting it, having aversions to it, just be, just be with it. And, you know, we're just talking like a day or the, the lead up to that full moon. You know, this is not uh, forever because there will be other energies coming into play in the future and things will change. So in terms of the outside world changing, that, that is definitely going to happen. But see if you can just be, just be with it and feel the fullness and feel what is. That's going to be a good thing. Because you see, there's acceptance in this full moon. And sometimes when we accept things, the new thing opens up. You see, we can go on a bit of a journey. All right, Cancer, well, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Leo. Leo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Now, Mars is moving into Virgo. That is the big news. The sun will follow soon afterwards. And Mercury is going to be in that house too, in Virgo. Now, for you, that's happening in your second house. So Mercury does really well here. This could be really nice for you. You could have a lift in your income. This is great if you're self-employed. You might find that you get some new clients come in without needing to chase after them or any of that. They just come to you, you know, isn't that amazing? Um, I've got the note here, let your logical self lead. And be careful with how you speak. Avoid arguments, okay? So we've got uh, Sun and Mars in the second house. So definitely avoid um, arguments with the family if you can. It's not a great time for loans. And again, that's a Sun and Mars thing there. And regarding the spending time with family, it would be good for you to try and carve out some me time as much as you can, okay, over this period. So 7th September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. This is happening in your first house. So this is your new moon, okay, this is amazing. So if you want to set some really big cycles into motion about what it is you want in your future, this is really the time to plant the seeds. So 
what visions do you have for your future? This is a really good time to indulge in those visions. See if you can feel the future happening now. That would be really amazing. It's a good time for that. On the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada. That's happening for you in your eighth house. So I'm saying for all signs that we can really experience the, a sort of ultimate detachment during this full moon. So if you can feel totally still, so that's no desire energy, no aversions, and that would be in the area of your family and in-laws. So maybe you've always had an example of a desire here would be, um, you know, gosh, I'd, I'd love if we could all be together. <laughs> and an example of an aversion is, God, I, I wish we could all be apart. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, it's an interesting one. So depending on where you are with some of this, like, see if you can just love exactly what your situation is now and just and just feel it and 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 love it as it is love your situation in terms of where you are with your family or in-laws or, or whatever that is see if you can love the situation as it is not needing it to be any different you have an incredible opportunity to feel the fullness the stillness in that area of your life and through that peace through that great acceptance things can shift. It's a, it's a way of creating space. It's quite interesting. So Leo, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Virgo. Virgo, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now we have Mars moving into Virgo. So this is all about you. The sun is going to be joining as well. Mercury is there. So this is all happening in your first house. This is very much about you this, this time. You've got a lot of... Um, <clears throat> big planetary energy in your first house there so we've got heavy duty energies passing through this sign now because it's a first house this can be very draining on your health so if you're feeling tired or run down please rest please prioritize rest and I can actually say that I'm an example of that <laughs> now because at the end of last week, I had on my to-do list, which I have in front of me, I had written finish September and it was supposed to be done on Thursday, but I had run out of energy and I was tired and I thought, do you know what? I'm absolutely just going to shift it and I'm going to do it on Monday and I'm going to launch it on Tuesday. And Tuesday is the 31st of August. I'm still on time. And what I love is uh, I love a guy called Lee Harris. And check out Lee Harris if I haven't pointed you to him already. Sometimes for different signs, I point people to different things. Lee Harris is a really good guy to check out. And I've been watching his monthly energy reports. They are brilliant. And sometimes he'll launch the report on the second of the month, third of the month, fourth of the month. And I love him for that because it's like he's shown me that you don't always have to be on time and that just be late. You know, and I, I'm feeling that you need to hear this message, Virgo, because um, you've got a lot of heavy duty energy passing through that first house of yours. You might be feeling tired, run down and don't push it. Just if, if you need to be late for something, be late, you know, and be OK with that. Karl Lagerfeld, he, another good example. He was always running late for everything. Mind you, his shows always ran on time. So anyway, but um, I've got the note here. Pay attention to stress levels, your health and your finances. This is not the month to push anything. Yeah, it, it's really not. And if you have to be late, be late. Um, because your health is more important. Okay, 7 September, we have a new moon in Leo, Purva Falguni. This is happening in your 12th house. So what new spiritual cycles would you like to set into motion? And I've got an example here. Perhaps you're working on improving yourself spiritually in some way what would you what would you wish for what would you love to have happen like is there a trigger that you want to resolve or something is there you know in terms of your dream self it's like god i'd love to not react to that person you know um i'd, I'd love to just be calm like when that person turns up 
I've also got the note here, perhaps you might want to work with a new guru. Perhaps you're looking for a guru or a mentor or somebody to teach you a particular thing. So that could be, this could be good to, to set some of those cycles into motion on the 7th of September. Now on the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces, Purvabhadra Pada. That for you is happening in your seventh house. So for all signs, I'm talking about the fact that we can experience this kind of ultimate detachment. We can at this time feel the fullness of who we are. We can feel totally okay with whatever situation that we're in, just completely at ease. We don't have to change the outside world. We can just be at peace and at ease within ourselves. Now, for you, this is happening in the area of your marriage and relationships. So on this full moon, 21st September, are you able to feel totally at peace in your marriage or in all of your relationships or important relationships to you, especially partnerships, but the other, you know, are you okay with the other? So this is no desire and no aversions. Okay, this is an ability to feel no desire, no aversion. So an example would be if you're single, you know, there's always a strong desire that, oh, I want to be with someone. You know, so if you're single and you're in that situation, can you reduce the desire and just feel okay with being single? And an example of aversion energy, let's think about this. So um, in terms of relationships, yeah, I mean, aversions. I'm trying to think marriage, relationships. There can be certain areas that we avoid when it comes to relationships. We don't want to deal with certain things. We want to sweep things under the rug. We don't want to be seen sometimes. So are you able to relax that? You know, if you have some kind of aversion in terms of your relationships. Sometimes we want to hide. Sometimes, or some, sometimes there are things we just don't want to deal with. So there can be resistance as well. So see if you can just calm all of those energies right down and just feel absolutely okay in the now and feel the fullness of you and feel okay in the now. This is a really, really beautiful full moon. And sometimes when we accept where we are 100%, the next thing in our life opens up. So there's also a big acceptance energy that's here for us on the 21st of September. All right, well, thank you so much, Virgo. Big month for you. Uh, we are now gonna welcome Libra. Libra, welcome, thank you so much for joining. I'm just checking the time, we're okay. Uh, Mars is moving into Virgo, that's the big news. Sun will be following soon after, Mercury is there. So that's all happening in your 12th house. So this is not the best transit this is a that house the 12th house area is going to be very jam-packed busy it might tire you out it might make you feel run down it might give you sleepless nights okay we've got the sun passing through the 12th house you might not be able to sleep at night uh, so but this will be a great month if you enjoy reading spiritual texts if you enjoy any of that then um, that'll be good great time to indulge in reading or entertainment I'm trying to think um, what book I remember when I was in London I couldn't sleep at like 3 a.m. or something and so I got out my Kindle and I started reading the poetry of Mikhail Naimi I'll put his name on the screen he's just brilliant it's a really beautiful book and the reason I got into that was because Osho loved that book and so I read it and it's just beautiful and I remember reading chunks of it at like sort of silly hours of the morning where I just, I don't know, I'd wake up and I'm like, oh great, I can't sleep. I'm sure the sun was passing through my 12th house, so, because I usually sleep pretty well. All right, on the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. This is happening for you in your 11th house. Oh, this is so beautiful. This is a great new moon for you. Yay, I love this. So if you could wish for anything, this is all about the seeds, you know, like a new moon, what seed do you want to plant for the future? So if you could wish for anything, what would it be? And this can be stuff, this can be people, this can be opportunities. What is it that you want? What do you really, really want? So see if you can plant a new seed on the 7th of September. 
Now on the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces Purvabhadrapada. For you, this is happening in your sixth house. So you have the chance to experience a sort of ultimate detachment during this full moon. So this is where we feel total stillness within the self. There's no desire, no aversions. Okay, and that's for you in the sixth house, in the area of your career, in the area of your service to the world. Could be to do with competition, could be to do if you've got legal cases or things that you're battling, it could even be to do with illness and things like that. I have the note here, see if you can be at peace with your work or, or with your sixth house matter. So that, that, as I said, could be illness, it could be it could be a legal issue or something like that, but you know you might be feeling a strong desire for a certain outcome in that area of your life. See if you can just relax the desire on this full moon, and you might be feeling aversions. You know there might be things that you don't want to do or you don't want to deal with. See, there's a, there's a desire energy in the, in aversion. Isn't that fascinating? I've been working with that lately and I'm like, oh wow, because I've been looking at all the aversions within me. It's like, because desire, I mean, that's a classic, that's Buddhism, right? Everyone's looking at desires, but aversions, we don't often look at that. And that is actually a place where that's a whole load of aversion, uh, desire energy is there, but it's just in a, in a different sort of a way. So see, and you could look at your resistance to things. Maybe, maybe you've got a resistance Hi there, Libra. Apologies about that. The camera got cut. I think I was saying maybe you've got a resistance to success. Maybe you've got a resistance to succeeding in your career. You might think, oh, if I succeed a lot, it'll offend this person or, you know, or I won't be able to handle it or whatever it is, right? So sometimes that can be a thing. But uh, Libra, it's it's looking like, I mean, yeah, it's not the best energy. I will be honest with you. It's, you could be a bit tired. And that that may not improve for a little while because uh, Sun and, and Mars are just going to keep going over, over your first house there. But there are better transits on the way. Okay, so this is the beauty of astrology. There's always good news in the sky. And there's always, we see the limits of things. Things always come to an end, you know. So I know we're all going through a really tough time right now, and things aren't great on the planet. But I'm telling you, there's an end. There really is. Astrology. The study of astrology has shown me that. When you study astrology and history, you see it. You see that things come to an end. They really do. We we don't live through bad times always and forever. We really don't. Okay. So Libra, thank you so much for joining, and we are now going to welcome Scorpio. Scorpio, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. Mars, we're looking at Mars. So Mars is moving into Virgo. Now Sun will join soon afterwards and Mercury is already there. And all of this activity is happening in your 11th house. Oh, this is so beautiful. I am so happy for you, Scorpio. This is great energy. Great, great, great energy. So it's a great time to go for a promotion. Great time to switch jobs. Uh, to go for a job or to be networking, picking up clients, picking up new business, great for opportunities. This is really great. So I've got the note here, time to shine and profit big. So good on you, Scorpio. Enjoy this energy and enjoy this month. Try and make the most of it. If you're finding it hard to shut out the outside world, just shut out the outside world. <laughs> just really just turn off the TV and focus on you and, and enjoy this beautiful energy because I know the world is, is not in great shape right now, but you've got good, good energy to, to really get going on some things for yourself. Okay. Uh, so on the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. So this is happening in your 10th house. This is really lovely energy and I, I have the, the note here and the idea here that what do you want to be remembered for professionally? You can plant seeds at this time to really manifest your dream career now. And your dream career begins by you thinking about it. Your dream career begins by you 
seeing someone else do doing something similar to what you do and you think gosh I would love to do that one day and and sometimes you know you may not even realize that you will end up doing that and I'm just thinking of an example of my life how I've always watched astrologers and I've loved what they do and I remember um, watching Deborah King on uh, YouTube and listening to her podcasts on Hay House and all these different things and I just was fascinated with how she was this corporate lawyer and she totally transformed her life and became a full-time shaman basically she's a shaman professional shaman like she transformed her whole life and I was just like wow how do you go from that to that and yeah I, I didn't know that I would have a chance at doing a similar thing or I, I had no idea at that time but I just liked her story and and this could be on the 7th September you might find someone out there in the world who's doing something and you think wow I just like like lately I found this guy Ozzy Cossack and he's fascinating and he started this channel and he's doing this amazing thing and you know I look at that and I go wow look at that so you might find someone new or meet someone or there could be you know some ideas or something like that so um, this is the time 7 September to plant seeds to manifest your dream career okay now on the 21st of September we've got a full moon in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada fifth house so you can experience the ultimate detachment during this full moon now for you this is in the fifth house it's in the area of your creativity or your children so what I'm suggesting is that we feel total stillness in regards to yeah our creativity or our children now, let's take a look at both so let's take a look at our let's take a look at children first this I, I'm being drawn to children more because this is so interesting like can you feel totally still so that's no desire energy no aversion energy so like with your children for example you know I guess you wish things for them you wish that they're gonna do this and do that can you relax that the, the wishing that you have for them an aversion energy are there things that you worry about or you you know you, you wouldn't want your children to turn out a certain way or things like that <clears throat> I, this is actually reminding me of a friend of mine who told me yeah, I, I don't want my little girl to turn into XYZ like <laughs> so he had this aversion energy and she was only tiny you know but um, but can you just relax all the energies that you have around your children that would be an amazing thing to do on the 21st of September and the other thing would be your creativity can you feel totally still about your creativity and I know I know this for me yeah desire energy I'm always desiring I always make this I want to make that I want to do this I want to do that uh, but yeah the idea would be can you um, reduce your desire or your aversion energy around your creativity can you just embrace reality as it is around you exactly as it is because when you accept what is there exactly as it is the new thing might open up okay so it's a good time to do that on the 21st of september so scorpio thank you so much for joining and we are now going to welcome Sagittarius Sagittarius welcome thank you so much for joining now we've got Mars moving into Virgo we're gonna have the Sun moving into Virgo soon afterwards we've got Mercury in there so it's a very busy sort of jam-packed there's a little traffic jam going on there in uh, Virgo so for you that's happening in your 10th house it's got three planets there so this is quite a powerhouse transit for all three of these it's actually quite good for your career so I've got the note here great time to make progress in your current career okay so this is whatever you're doing now you can make a lot of progress in that all three planets are really strong here but with Mars the only thing I caution there is just be careful with how you speak to your superiors at work on the 7th of September we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni happening in your ninth house so this is the time where we plant seeds we plant seeds for new things in our life it's for you this is happening in your ninth house so I have the question how would you like to grow intellectually are there some skills that you want to learn is there 
a teacher that you would love to learn from, um, this is a really good time for that. And I've got the note here, yeah, you can plant seeds to manifest these changes now. And these changes can really help you in your career. So we are looking at kind of ninth house. Yeah, we could look at authority here too. Uh, would you like to take more control over your own life? You know, that's another thing. Take your power back. 7th September, you can visualize how you would like life to be with your new intellectual abilities, with your extra authority and power. Um, you know, let's, let's say you've, you've learned all this stuff and you've figured out all this stuff. How would you like to use it in the world? On the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces, Purva Bhadrapada. That's the fourth house for you. So you've got a real chance to experience the ultimate detachment on this full moon. I'm saying this for, for all signs here, um, where you can feel total stillness. So that's no desire energy and no aversion energy in the area of your home. So this is a good one, actually, because with our home, we always think, oh, I want to upgrade it and oh, I want to do this and I want to do that. And, you know, but are we loving it as it is, just as it is, you know, with the dirt and the mold and the dust and everything, right? <laughs> do we just love it as it is? And aversions, very often we want to move. We're like, oh, I'm sick of this town and uh, these people, or whatever it is, right? Like, uh, you know, I want to move. Like, so relax that aversion energy. Can you relax the, the desire energy and the aversion energy and just really be where you are and really love where you are? This could apply to country as well. Um, this could even extend that far. And I mean, you're Sagittarius. Yeah, this is country <laughs> as well. So um, don't wish for your home to be any different. Appreciate what is. You're at the last phase of Sadisati, Sagittarius, and I'm cheering you on. You're on the home stretch here. You're going to be out of this soon, so don't worry. It's not a great time. These are not great energies. It is tough, but hang in there. Stay strong. And <clears throat> as I've been saying to some of the signs, you know, one of the beautiful things about astrology is that we get this the study of seeing when things end. Everything has a limit, you know, and um, yeah, there's, there's going to be change. There's change on the horizon. So Sagittarius, thank you so much for joining. And we are now going to welcome Capricorn. Capricorn, welcome. Thank you so much for joining. So now Mars moves into Virgo. I think it was the 7th of September. Sun's going to join soon afterwards. And Mercury is also in that house. So it's a pretty busy house. And for you, this is happening in your ninth house. Okay, so I have the note here. Be careful with how you speak to superiors. Um, this is not a great transit for work. Um, so yeah, superiors at work, uh, or, or gosh, I mean, superiors in life these days. I mean, you walk down the street and there's a superior, you know, <laughs> wanting to check you out or something, <laughs> tell you off. Or, I'm in Sydney, Australia. It's, yeah. Anyway, uh, so as I say, there's, there's authority, like, just sort of everywhere. This is not a great transit for work. Put your head down and roll up your sleeves is the note that I have. Yeah, there's, there's not a time to pick a fight um, or have any run-ins with authority. And I mean, gosh, this, this, this does apply to uh, what's going on in the world as well. Yeah, I didn't think of that. I thought of that just now. So if you're in Sydney, for example, you don't want to be picking any fights with anyone. Now's not the time to shine at work. That time is coming after this month. So, um, yeah, as in shine, as in draw attention to yourself, kind of. It's, um, it's just that it's, it's an ideal time to kind of just lay low, put your head down, work, work, work. That's, that's what I'm feeling here. So on the 7th of September, we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni. This is happening in your eighth house. If you could acquire assets to share with others, what would you wish for? Okay, we've got a new moon here. So this is the time to plant seeds for the future. What, what cycles would you like to set off into motion? And they begin with our thoughts. They begin you know, with our imagination. So 
Imagine that. Imagine if you could acquire lots of assets to share with others. That would be incredible. Or, you know, when like you're chatting with family and one family member's like, oh gosh, I'd love to have a little house in that place. Wouldn't it be amazing if somehow you, you got the assets to set up your whole family in such a way that, that everybody could be really, really happy? So this is the time to wish for that. Okay, this is a time to plant that seed because you might manifest it. And on the 21st of September, we have a full moon in Pisces Purvabhadrapada. That's happening for you in your third house. So you've got the opportunity to experience a sort of ultimate detachment. And I'm saying this for all signs. Um, you can feel totally still in the area of your friendships. Wow, this is a good one. Gosh, I wish this was for all signs because I think all signs are going through changes to friendships and it's difficult, you know. Um, there are some big changes taking place on our planet right now. So for you, 21st September full moon, third house, yeah, this is the area of your friendship. So what I'm suggesting to people is don't feel any desire energy and don't feel any aversion energy. Don't wish your friends to be any different. Appreciate them as they are right now. Just feel the appreciation for them as they are. So no desire for them to change. Uh, no aversions. And boy, I mean, don't we have some aversions these days? Oh God, I don't want to see this person. Or oh, I don't, I don't want to talk about that thing. Or, you know, I mean, there's, there's a lot of, you know, and I wish they would be like this. I don't want to deal with this, right? Desire, I wish, aversions, I don't want. So look at these things within yourself. And just see, can you relax those energies and just be totally okay with what things are like right now. And the more you're okay with and embrace the now and accept reality as it is now, that's creating space and the new can open up. The next thing can come in. So um, see how you go with that on the 21st of September. Now Capricorn, I know you're in Sadisati. Hang in there, keep going, keep going strong. Many of you have actually reached out and, and consulted with me. Thank you so much to those of you who have. Yeah, it's um, what a time, you know, and I know you guys are in the thick of it, and but you're incredibly strong. And I see that in the comments below. I see you Capricorn people are just so strong right now and inspirational, quite frankly. Um, you inspire me, you know, I, I, I read your comments. I'm not Capricorn, I don't have too much of that energy. I have a little bit uh, in, my, in my D9 actually, and then my D10, the 10th house, I do have some of that. But um, yeah, it's wow, what times. And you, you guys are just, you're, 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 you're legendary, you know, you're, 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 doing, you're doing great. So I, I really do want to say that Capricorn. Uh, Capricorn moons in particular that message is for Sadi Sati yeah all right well Capricorn take care and we're now going to meet Aquarius Aquarius welcome thank you so much for joining I'm just checking the time good we're good for time okay so Mars is moving into Virgo and the Sun and Mercury uh, so the Sun is going to follow soon afterwards and Mercury is there so this is all happening for you in your eighth house this is really good for Mercury, you know. Mercury does really well here. So lead with your logical self in all matters, uh, with family and with work. Now, Sun and Mars do not do well here. So if you're feeling really tired, rest. Okay, look after your health. Really, really, really important. But Mercury does well here. And do you know what? Mercury figures things out here. Mercury finds answers. And I'm just, for some reason, feeling inspired do I have the time? I think I do. I just want to look up Julian Assange because I'm pretty sure he's got his Mercury in this spot. I mean, I think he's got sun there as well. So it's really lit up because he's figured out a lot of stuff. No, it's Venus. Wow. Okay. It's not Mercury. He's got Mercury next door in Cancer. All right. He's got the sun there and Venus. Look, I mean, the sun's here. So you've got the sun here, there might be some things that you're figuring out at this time. 
kind of figuring out the deep dark secrets of the world maybe there are a couple of rabbit holes you're going down and you're really figuring stuff out or you're helping other people awaken there could be that kind of thing it's just interesting that I, for some reason I felt compelled to do that so somebody out there needs this um, but yeah the overall message with the all that big energy in Virgo is rest because it's going to tire you out a bit so please rest now on the 7th of September we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni this is happening in your seventh house so if you're single what type of partner would you like to be with this is a good time to visualize who is that dream person that you would love to meet uh, and commit to one day right if you're single now, if you're in a partnership what are the dreams that you would like to live out with your partner where are the places you'd love to go and, and what are the things that you'd love to do together you know maybe you want to build something together maybe you want to renovate your home or buy a home or whatever it is right so um, plant seeds at this time 7 September to manifest the dream things that you would love to have happen in your relationship sector and on the 21st of September we have a full moon happening in Pisces Purva Bhadrapada that's in the second house so you've really got the ability to experience this sort of ultimate detachment uh, on this full moon so feel totally still and that's in the area of your family so I have the note here don't wish your family to be any different appreciate them as they are and we're looking at desire energy and we're looking at aversion energy so don't have any desire energy don't have any aversion energy don't you know desire that and maybe the desire is I mean this is a lovely desire that I'd love we'd I'd love if we could all be together you know maybe you're all far apart maybe you're all in different countries so see if you can just relax that desire for a bit and just be okay with things as they are um, maybe there's an aversion energy maybe you're all in the one house and you're like god I wish we could <laughs> you know be apart right so whatever the, the, the thing is that you're feeling desire or aversion see if you can relax those feelings and just feel total stillness and happiness with exactly where you are and exactly what is on that 21st of September full moon so thank you so much Aquarius Aquarius I do want to say just quickly I want to just acknowledge that you're in the first phase of Sadisati if you're an Aquarius moon I just want to say hang in there okay uh, and and you know weirdly you have chosen a good time to be in Sadisati because it is going to take the world a few years to recover I'm going to cover this in an astro chat episode soon so don't worry but um, you've weirdly chosen a good time for Sadisati because by the time it's done the world will be really really good and better and you'll be able to enjoy it okay so uh, but I'm, I'm wishing you well because I, I know even now things might not be great it might be quite difficult so hang in there stay strong and, um, and take time out for yourself whenever you need to all right now we are going to welcome Pisces Pisces welcome thank you so much for joining so Mars is moving into Virgo that's big news this month Sun is going to move in there shortly afterwards Mercury is there okay this is all happening in your seventh house so I have the note here yes yeah, it's, it's a great time to be productive on your own <laughs> if you can without involving other people why do I say that that's because Sun and Mars can be pretty full-on in that seventh house seventh house is the house of other people you've got some big heavy-duty energies there and if you do have to deal with other people uh, be diplomatic and you know um, go easy go easy on on dealing with other people you know it, 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 there could be um, some tension there but I've got the note here see what you can accomplish on your own steam aim for diplomacy and rest when you're tired yeah on the 7th of September we have a new moon in Leo Purva Falguni so this is happening in your sixth house okay let's take a look at this in terms of career how would you want to serve humanity what what does that look like if if you if you can really contribute to humanity help people in some way um, how would you do that what would you do this is a really interesting thing our service to the world our service to humanity should that just be limited to career no it doesn't have to be because we serve humanity the all is one every day you know um, maybe 
one of the things here is you wish to be more peaceful because if you're more peaceful that's contributing to humanity all the time that's lifting the peace of the planet you know um, but it's it's a really interesting time so 7 September you've got the ability to plant seeds to set new cycles into motion regarding your career regarding your service into the in the world so visualize yourself doing amazing things and really helping people start seeing that perhaps you're already doing it you know um, but you want to achieve that next level so just start visualizing start seeing okay what how, you know how can yeah how can you help the collective what can you do and people are doing amazing things people are doing such amazing things i'm watching them all the time i watch this guy i've talked about him a few times already in the video today about um Ossie Cossack he's this guy who's just picked up his camera and he goes around Sydney Australia and he's just showing what's happening in in this city and he's taking the police on and, and do apologies the camera got cut just now sorry about that Pisces but yeah I was talking about Ossie Cossack and how like he is taking on the police and he's fighting for freedom and he's hiring lawyers and you know because um, he's getting all these silly fines by the police and he's hired this really high-powered barrister in Australia to take on these silly little fines I mean he's got the means to do so but this is a very sixth house what he's doing I'm just that's why I'm bringing him up and he said on one of his videos that um, bringing in Dimfner Hawkins the barrister you know to deal with these police fines is a bit like taking a bazooka to an arm wrestle like it's really funny but he's 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 doing amazing work and he's sharing that you know and I, but i think what he does for a living is actually different and that's why i brought him up as well because i wanted to say to you that on the 7th of september this is not about you know change your career totally no you can keep doing your job but maybe in addition to that or you know running alongside that what are some of the things that you you can do to help the all is one and you might not have the time or means to do it now but visualize that in five years time my life will be different so that i can start doing xyz it's that kind of thing uh, and on the 21st of september we've got a full moon in pisces prova badrapada that's in the first house so you can experience oh well this is beautiful this is your full moon and you can experience total detachment okay this is amazing we're talking total stillness no de no desire energy no aversions and that's in the area of yourself so you know we always wish for things we always want things and and that's our desire energy but equally there are things we don't want we're like oh god i don't i don't want to deal with that sweep it on the rug or get rid of it or i want to go away you know and that that is a kind of a reverse desire isn't that interesting and i've really been looking at the aversions within me that's been a fascinating thing i've been doing lately that's because i've been reading lester levinson's book those of you who've been following the pick cards will know that but um, i have the note here on the 21st of september this full moon can you appreciate your full self exactly as you are is that something that you are able to do um, that would be amazing so pisces i want to thank you so much for joining and to everyone uh, sometimes there are people who do who do watch the whole thing or, or who tune in at the end and i just want to thank everyone so much for for being part of this beautiful community and i look forward to seeing you next time mm -hmm.